There's a moment in life when you walk into a room and everything just feels off. You can sense it, the subtle shift in energy, the way people avoid eye contact, or give those quick, polite smiles that don't quite reach their eyes. It's like you're invisible, or worse, an outsider. And it hits you. Something about the way you're showing up is causing people to look down on you, even if no one says it out loud. But here's the thing. Most of the time it's not about who you are, but about the habits you're carrying. Habits that might be pushing people away without you even realizing it. I've been there too, caught up in patterns that made me my own worst enemy. But as the Stoics teach us, self-awareness is the key to change. So today we're diving into seven habits that could be sabotaging your relationships and reputation, and how Stoic philosophy can help you break free from them. This isn't about perfection, it's about progress. And if you appreciate what we're doing here, the simple free favor I'll ask from you is to hit that subscribe button. And trust me, don't skip any part of this video. You won't want to miss the insights that could change how people see you. Let's get into it. Number one, gossiping. We've all done it at some point, right? It's almost like it's wired into us, this urge to share the latest scoop, to be in the know about someone else's drama. It feels innocent, even fun, because who doesn't like to feel connected or like they're part of the in crowd? But here's the truth. Gossip is like a double-edged sword. Sure, you might feel a sense of bonding in the moment, but every time you dish out someone else's business, people around you are silently asking themselves, if they're talking about them behind their back, what are they saying about me? That's where the real damage happens. Gossip creates a ripple effect of distrust. No one's going to tell you their deeper thoughts or let you into their personal life if they think you'll spread it around the second they're not in the room. You're building walls, not bridges. I used to think gossiping made me more relatable, like it was a way to break the ice and connect with others. But all it did was push people away. The conversations would stay shallow because no one really trusted me enough to go deeper. Here's where Stoicism steps in. The Stoics believed that what's outside of our control, like other people's lives or their business, isn't worth our focus. Gossiping is the exact opposite of that. It's wasting mental energy on things we have zero control over. Instead of being caught up in other people's drama, we should focus on controlling ourselves, our actions, our words, and how we show up in the world. When we gossip, we're not just bringing others down, we're lowering our own value. Marcus Aurelius once said, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. It's a powerful reminder that the energy we spend talking about others could be better spent improving ourselves. And here's something else to think about. When you gossip, it's usually to avoid looking at your own flaws, your own struggles. It's way easier to point out what someone else is doing wrong than it is to sit with your own discomfort. But that's the thing about stoicism. It challenges you to stop avoiding your own reflection. Instead of talking about what someone else should fix, ask yourself, what can I fix in my own life? That shift alone can be life-changing. If you find yourself in a group where gossiping seems to be the norm, it takes real strength to step away from it. And guess what? That's where real respect comes in. When you're the person who says, I'm not going to talk about others like that, people notice. They might not say it, but they'll respect you for it you'll start building a reputation as someone who can be trusted, someone who's focused on what matters, not on petty drama. That's a powerful way to live. So, next time someone starts gossiping, remember this, it's a choice. You can either jump into the conversation and lower the trust others have in you, or you can take the stoic path, stay quiet and focus on what's within your control. You might be surprised at how much more peaceful life becomes when you stop worrying about what everyone else is doing and start working on becoming the best version of yourself. 
Trust me, the respect you'll gain from that is far more satisfying than any temporary thrill you get from gossip. Number two, being passive aggressive. Let's be real, we've all done it at some point. It's that classic I'm fine response, even though you're clearly not fine. Or when someone asks you to do something and you say, sure, whatever, but inside, you're silently plotting their downfall. It feels like a clever way to avoid confrontation, right? You're not outright starting a fight, but you're still getting your frustration across. The problem is, passive aggression is like trying to communicate with smoke signals in a thunderstorm. It doesn't work, and it just leaves everyone confused and frustrated. I used to think being passive-aggressive was a smart move. Like, why argue or be direct when you can just throw a little shade and make the other person feel bad without ever saying what's really bothering you? But here's the thing. No one is a mind reader. And if they are, they're probably ignoring those passive-aggressive signals on purpose because it's exhausting. Instead of solving the issue, you end up creating this weird tension where nothing gets resolved and everyone feels annoyed. You feel frustrated because they didn't magically understand what's wrong and they feel frustrated because you're acting like everything's fine when it clearly isn't. Stoicism has a really clear answer to this kind of behavior. The Stoics valued honesty and clear communication, seeing it as a way to live in harmony with others. Marcus Aurelius talked about the importance of speaking the truth as it is, without hiding behind emotions. When you're passive-aggressive, you're doing the opposite. You're hiding what you really feel because you're afraid of conflict or afraid of being vulnerable. But here's the thing. Avoiding confrontation doesn't make the problem go away. It just makes it fester. And eventually, that unspoken resentment is going to explode in a much uglier way. Being passive-aggressive is like emotional dodgeball. You think you're avoiding the problem by not being direct, but really, you're just hitting people with your frustration in a way they can't fix. It's like setting a trap that no one knows is there and then being mad when they don't fall into it. It's unfair to you and it's unfair to the people around you. The worst part is, passive aggression makes you seem difficult to deal with manipulative even. It turns what could be a simple conversation into a guessing game that no one wins. The stoic approach here is simple but powerful. Communicate clearly and directly. Yes, it can be terrifying at first, especially if you're used to hiding behind passive aggression to avoid conflict. But trust me, being upfront about how you feel saves you so much emotional energy in the long run. It's about being vulnerable, yes, but also about being strong enough to say, this is what's bothering me, without expecting someone else to just figure it out. People respect honesty, even if it's uncomfortable. More importantly, you start respecting yourself when you stop playing games and start having real conversations. I'll be honest, the first time I actually expressed my feelings instead of sending a shady text or giving someone the cold shoulder, I was scared, but it was also liberating. Instead of feeling like I had to dodge the issue, I faced it head on. And guess what? The world didn't end. In fact, things got better. People responded with more respect, and I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. When you're clear about your feelings, people know where they stand with you, and that builds stronger, more authentic relationships. So, the next time you feel like firing off a passive-aggressive text or giving someone the silent treatment, ask yourself, do I want to keep playing this game or do I want to grow up and handle this like an adult? Passive aggression keeps you stuck in a cycle of frustration and disappointment while clear communication sets you free. Life gets so much easier when you stop expecting people to read your mind and start telling them what's really going on it might be uncomfortable at first, but trust me, the respect you gain from being direct is worth it. Stoicism teaches us to face challenges with courage and honesty, and this is one area where that wisdom can truly change your life.
Number three, never taking responsibility. We all know that person who always has an excuse ready to go. Maybe it's even been you. You know how it goes, Mr. Deadline? Oh, the Wi-Fi went down. Late to a meeting? Traffic was terrible. Didn't finish something important. Well, no one told me the due date. It's this constant deflection of blame that, in the moment, feels like a way to protect yourself from criticism. But here's the thing. When you're always passing the buck, you're actually doing the opposite of what you think. You're not avoiding responsibility. You're avoiding growth. And guess what? People notice. But here's the reality check. When you're constantly shifting the blame, people start to see you as unreliable. You become the person no one can count on because nothing is ever your fault. And worse than that, you're actually robbing yourself of the chance to improve. Every time you avoid taking responsibility, you miss out on an opportunity to learn something, to become better. The Stoics had a powerful view on this. They believed that the only thing we truly have control over is ourselves, our actions, our reactions, our decisions. Epictetus once said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. When you're blaming the world around you, whether it's traffic, technology or even other people, you're giving away your power. You're telling yourself, I'm not in control of this situation. But here's the hard truth. Taking responsibility, owning up to your mistakes, is the most empowering thing you can do. Why? Because when you own it, you can fix it. You can change the outcome next time. I remember a time at work when I missed a big deadline. My first instinct was to whip out my usual list of excuses. Too much on my plate, didn't get the email in time, technical issues, you name it. But then something clicked. I realized that none of those excuses would make the situation better. They wouldn't change the fact that I had dropped the ball. So, I tried something different. I went to my boss and simply said, I messed up. I didn't manage my time well. I'll do better next time. And you know what? My boss didn't freak out. No one lost their mind. In fact, my boss respected me more for owning up to it and I felt a sense of relief for not hiding behind excuses. This is where Stoicism really shines. It teaches us that taking responsibility is not about admitting defeat or looking weak. It's about taking control of our own lives. When you take responsibility for your actions, you reclaim your power. You stop being a victim of your circumstances and start being the driver of your own life. And here's the thing, no one expects you to be perfect. People just want you to be honest and accountable. When you can look at a situation and say, yeah, I could have done better, you're already on the path to growth. That's where real respect comes from, both from others and, more importantly, from yourself. One of the toughest lessons I've learned is that excuses don't protect you, they trap you. They keep you stuck in the same cycle of mediocrity because if everything's always someone else's fault, then there's nothing for you to improve on, right? Wrong. When you stop making excuses and start taking responsibility, everything changes. You start seeing where you can do better. You start learning from your mistakes instead of running from them. And the people around you? They start trusting you more because they know you're someone who's not going to pass the blame when things go wrong. So, the next time you're tempted to blame something or someone else for a mistake, pause. Ask yourself, what part of this is within my control? You might be surprised at how much of it is. Own your mistakes and you'll find that people respect you more. Not because you're perfect, but because you're real. Stoicism teaches that life is about focusing on what we can control. And when it comes to responsibility, that's one of the most empowering lessons you can embrace. Remember, it's not about being right all the time. It's about owning when you're wrong and growing from it. That's where real strength comes from. Number four, 
poor hygiene. This is one of those things that seems obvious, but it's amazing how often people overlook it. We're talking about the basics here, regular showers, brushing your teeth, clean clothes. It sounds simple, right? Yet somehow, we all know that person who just doesn't seem to prioritize these things. And trust me, it affects how people see you. Stoicism teaches us the importance of self-respect, and honestly, hygiene is one of the simplest ways to show respect for yourself and others. Now, let me be clear. Hygiene isn't just about smelling good, though that's definitely part of it. It's about showing the world that you value yourself enough to take care of your body. You might think, well, if I'm a good person, people will see past how I look or smell. But here's the harsh truth. People notice. If you're not taking care of your hygiene, they start to wonder what else you're neglecting. Maybe it's not fair, but it's reality. Poor hygiene can signal to others that you're disorganized, unreliable, or even lazy. And the Stoics understood that our external behavior, what we do with our bodies, how we present ourselves, reflects our internal state of mind. It's all connected. Stoicism is all about paying attention to what's within our control. And hygiene is one of those things we can control 100%. It's the simplest way to show that you're on top of your life. Marcus Aurelius wrote about the importance of physical cleanliness as a form of discipline. And it's true, taking care of your hygiene is a form of discipline. It's about doing what needs to be done, even when you don't feel like it. And let's face it, some days you might not feel like showering or brushing your teeth, especially if you're going through a rough time. But here's the thing, taking care of your physical body can actually help pull you out of that mental slump. When you're not feeling great, whether it's burnout, stress, or just a bad day, skipping hygiene can seem like an easy shortcut. I've been there too, dragging myself through tough times and letting the basics slide. But what I didn't realize is that neglecting my hygiene was dragging me down even further. It became a cycle. The worse I felt, the less I took care of myself, and the less I took care of myself, the worse I felt. It wasn't until a close friend pulled me aside and said, Hey, are you okay? You seem off lately, that I realized how far I'd let things slip. That was a turning point for me. Stoicism teaches us that caring for ourselves, both mentally and physically, is a duty. It's not just about looking good for others. It's about feeling good in your own skin. When you let go of basic hygiene, it's almost like you're telling yourself, I'm not worth the effort. And that mentality can spiral into deeper issues. On the flip side, something as simple as a shower or clean clothes can shift your entire mindset. It's strange, but true. When you take care of the small things, it gives you the momentum to tackle the bigger things. Hygiene is like the foundation of self-care. If that's shaky, everything else is harder. And here's the practical side. Good hygiene is a form of self-respect that earns respect from others. People will notice if you take care of yourself, even if they don't say anything. It's one less barrier to connecting with others. You won't have to worry about whether someone's avoiding sitting next to you or if they're distracted by something else. You're showing up as your best self, and that's what stoicism is about. Being the best version of yourself no matter what's going on around you. So, if you've been neglecting the basics, this is your sign to take a step back and reset. Grab that soap, brush those teeth, wash your hair. Not for anyone else, but for yourself. Because when you feel clean and put together, it's like the rest of life feels a little bit easier to handle. Remember, hygiene isn't just about looking or smelling good. It's about showing that you value yourself and are ready to face the world with respect and confidence. And trust me, the people around you will appreciate it too. Number five, constant complaining. I know life throws curveballs, 
and it feels good to vent once in a while. But here's the thing. There's a fine line between healthy venting and falling into the trap of constant complaining. You know the type. Someone who finds a reason to gripe about everything, no matter how good things might actually be. It's too hot. It's too cold. The coffee is too weak. The Wi-Fi is too slow. They could be on a beach in paradise and still find something to complain about. And if you're sitting there thinking, I don't know anyone like that, well, you might want to check if that person is you. I've been there myself. Complaining is one of those habits that feels so harmless in the moment, but it has this sneaky way of bringing you down and dragging everyone else down with you. At first, it might seem like you're just being real or letting off steam, but when it becomes constant, it paints you as someone who only sees the negative. And here's the thing, people start to avoid negativity. If every time you open your mouth, it's to complain about something, even the people closest to you will start to distance themselves. No one wants to be around that dark cloud of negativity all the time. Stoicism teaches us that while we can't control what happens to us, we can control how we respond. Complaining is often our default response when things don't go the way we want them to. But here's the kicker. When you're constantly focused on what's wrong, you're training your mind to ignore what's right. Complaining becomes a habit, a mental pattern that locks you into this loop of negativity. Epictetus said, we suffer not from the events in our lives, but from our judgments about them. Every time we complain, we're reinforcing those negative judgments instead of finding solutions, or better yet, accepting what's out of our control. The Stoics would say that when you're stuck in a cycle of complaining, you're wasting energy on things you can't control, and you're missing out on the things you can. It's a mindset shift. Instead of focusing on what's wrong, you start focusing on what you can do about it. And if you can't change it, then let it go. Complaining doesn't fix anything. It just amplifies the problem and keeps you stuck. Once I realized that, I made a conscious effort to stop myself whenever I felt the urge to complain. It wasn't easy at first, but over time, I noticed a huge change not just in how others responded to me, but in how I felt about myself. The truth is, constant complaining comes from a place of feeling powerless. It's like saying, I can't do anything about this, so I'm just going to focus on what's wrong. But Stoicism reminds us that there's always something we can do, even if that something is just adjusting our attitude. Marcus Aurelius often wrote about gratitude as a way to combat negative thinking. When you focus on what you're thankful for, you don't have room to complain. It's a practice that takes time, but it's worth it. Instead of complaining about the cold office, I started thinking, hey, at least I have a job in a place that's comfortable enough to work. That shift in perspective doesn't change the situation, but it changes how you feel about it. And here's the best part. When you stop complaining, people notice. They feel lighter around you. You become the person who uplifts a conversation instead of dragging it down. People are drawn to positivity, to those who focus on solutions instead of problems. Complaining might give you a quick release in the moment, but it never leads to growth or progress. It just keeps you spinning in the same negativity but when you start practicing gratitude, even in the smallest things, life feels different, lighter, and the people around you will thank you for it too. So, the next time you catch yourself about to complain, whether it's about the weather, your job, or the fact that the coffee doesn't taste quite right, stop and ask yourself, is this something I can change? And if not, is it worth my energy? Instead of falling into the habit of complaining, Try finding one thing, no matter how small, to be grateful for. It won't just change how others see you, it'll change how you see yourself. That's what Stoicism is all about, choosing how we respond, no matter what life throws at us. Number 6. 
being chronically late. This is one of those habits that can sneak up on you because it doesn't always seem like a big deal at first. You think, oh, I'm just five minutes late, no one will notice. But here's the thing, those five minutes start adding up and before you know it, you've become the person who's always late. Whether it's to a meeting, a dinner with friends, or even just casual hangouts, people start to expect that you're never going to show up on time. And trust me, it sends a message, one that you might not even realize you're broadcasting. Now, I used to be that person. I thought being fashionably late was no big deal. In fact, I kind of thought it was cool, like it added some sort of mystique. But let's be honest, there's nothing fashionable about it. When you're constantly late, what you're really telling people is, my time is more important than yours. That's the message, whether you intend it or not. And the more I did it, the more I realized that it wasn't just about time management. It was a reflection of deeper issues, like my respect for others, and even my own anxiety about being fully present in situations. Stoicism teaches us the value of being disciplined and showing up fully, and that includes being on time. When you're late, you're not just disrespecting someone else's schedule, you're disrespecting the opportunity to be fully engaged in life. Marcus Aurelius talked a lot about how we should treat each moment as precious, because time is something we can never get back. Every time you're late, you're not only wasting other people's time, you're wasting your own. The Stoics believed in being present and making the most of the time we have, and showing up late is the opposite of that. What's more, being late often has less to do with poor time management and more to do with avoidance. Sometimes we're late because we're trying to avoid something. Maybe it's the anxiety of a big meeting or not wanting to face a tough conversation. For me, I realized I was using lateness as a kind of buffer. If I showed up late, I didn't have to be the first one there, fully present and ready to engage. It was a way of protecting myself from uncomfortable situations. But here's the thing, Stoicism teaches us to face life head on. Avoiding discomfort doesn't make it go away. It just delays the inevitable. Showing up late is often a symptom of avoiding the reality of what's in front of you. The Stoics believed that living virtuously means taking responsibility for your actions, and being late is something you can absolutely control. It's about respecting yourself enough to honor your commitments and respecting others enough to value their time. When you start making an effort to be on time, you're telling the world, I respect your time and I respect mine too. It's a small thing that can have a huge impact on how people perceive you. You become someone who is reliable, trustworthy and fully present. I had to make some real changes in my own life to break the habit of being late. I started setting alarms earlier, planning out my day more carefully and most importantly, I changed my mindset. Instead of thinking, I can get away with being five minutes late, I started thinking, I want to honor this commitment by showing up fully and on time. And let me tell you, it made a world of difference. Not only did people notice, but I felt better too. I wasn't rushing in at the last minute, stressed and flustered. I was calm, prepared, and ready to engage with whatever was happening. So, if you're someone who's always running late, it's time for a change, not just for the sake of others, but for yourself. Start by being honest with yourself about why you're late. Are you avoiding something? Are you not prioritizing your time? Once you get real about the reasons, you can start making the adjustments. Set alarms earlier, leave your house 10 minutes before you think you need to, and practice the stoic principle of showing up for life as it is. The more you do this, the more respect you'll earn from others and from yourself. Because here's the truth, being on time isn't just about respect for others, it's about showing that you value your own time and the moments you have. Number seven, 
Playing the victim. This is a tough habit to break because honestly it feels safe. When things go wrong, it's easy to slip into that mindset of why does this always happen to me? Or it's not my fault, it's just bad luck. It can feel comforting to believe that the universe is conspiring against you, like you're the main character in a tragic story that keeps getting rewritten in the worst way. But here's the thing. Playing the victim isn't just exhausting for the people around you, it's exhausting for you. And more importantly, it's a trap. It keeps you stuck in the same cycle, with no way out. When you play the victim, you're giving away your power. You're handing over control of your life to circumstances, to other people, to things you can't change. It's comforting in the moment, but it's also a form of self-sabotage. Stoicism, on the other hand, teaches the exact opposite. The Stoics believed that while we can't control everything that happens to us, we can always control how we respond to it. Epictetus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. That's the key right there. When you play the victim, you're reacting to life like you have no say in what happens next. But the truth is, you have more control than you think. Life will always throw curveballs. That's inevitable. What matters is how you choose to handle them. Are you going to sit back and say, this is just my bad luck? Or are you going to ask, what can I learn from this? How can I grow? Playing the victim often comes from a place of fear. Fear of failure. Fear of not being good enough. Fear of owning up to your mistakes. It's easier to say, this isn't my fault, than to look in the mirror and ask, what could I have done differently? And trust me, I know how hard that is. There was a time when I couldn't face the fact that some of my problems were of my own making. It was easier to blame circumstances, other people, or just bad luck. But the moment I stopped doing that was the moment things started to change. When I took ownership of my role in situations, both the good and the bad, I realized I had the power to change my life. Here's the kicker. Playing the victim doesn't just hurt you, it hurts the people around you too. It's draining. No one wants to be around someone who's constantly in a state of poor me. It's like a dark cloud that follows you everywhere and after a while people start avoiding it. They might feel sympathy for you at first, but over time that turns into frustration. Why? Because deep down people know that you have the ability to take control and watching you not do it is frustrating. They see the potential in you that you're not tapping into. And here's something the Stoics would say. When you play the victim, you're missing out on an incredible opportunity for growth. Marcus Aurelius constantly reminded himself that life's challenges were actually chances to practice virtue. Instead of seeing setbacks as personal attacks, he saw them as a way to strengthen his character. What if, instead of asking, why does this always happen to me? You asked, how can this make me stronger? That shift in mindset changes everything. Suddenly, life isn't happening to you. It's happening for you. Every challenge becomes a chance to become a better version of yourself. The stoic approach is simple but powerful. Take ownership of your life. When you stop playing the victim, you start taking responsibility for what happens next. It's not about blaming yourself for everything that goes wrong. It's about recognizing that you always have a choice in how you respond. That's where your power lies. When you stop waiting for the world to change and start changing yourself, amazing things can happen. You start to feel less like life is happening to you and more like you're in control of your own destiny. So, next time you catch yourself slipping into that victim mentality, pause, ask yourself, am I really powerless here, or am I just afraid to take control? Shift your mindset from, why is this happening to me, to, what can I do about it? When you stop playing the victim, you step into a position of strength, you take your power back. Life will still throw challenges your way, that's a given, but instead of being knocked down by them, 
you'll stand up taller, ready to face whatever comes next. That's the power of Stoicism, and that's the power of owning your life. Remember, life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Every challenge, every setback, every bad habit you break is an opportunity to grow, to become stronger, to live more intentionally. You have the power to take control of your life, to rise above these habits and to be the best version of yourself. If you found this video helpful, make sure to check out one of the suggested videos on your screen for more insights to keep you on your path. Thank you for being a part of Stoic Journal, where we strive for progress, not perfection. Stay strong, and I'll see you next time.